All right, traders, George here, and time for some real interesting stuff. Uh, this is a big picture projection chart I did of the S&P many years ago. This is the last earliest screenshot I have of it from uh, November of 2010. I labeled this the third bubble scenario, dot com real estate, and then a nod to what some people might call the Fed fiat bubble. I sort of did that tongue in cheek. But what we're talking about here is a real common pattern it happens in all markets in all time frames lower left x to a a to b b to c completed d and then the one to one harmonic extension for the upside target well as of a few days ago that one to one harmonic was hit we did 180233 in the cash s p and this green line has been fulfilled okay we also breached the bottom fib region here crossing over 17 95s and then I got 23s and 60s as two other key points to watch but the one-to-one -one harmonic has been hit what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you some charts that I did as my development and lead in to this uh, so you can get some background on that and then I also want to talk about fundamentals lastly I'm going to show you some historic charts old charts and that will be a setup for the second video which has yet to be done so for this video let's get right into it let's go back to where I was looking at charts in 2008 obviously looking at the top up here we had a symmetrical double top and we had a follow-through on what we consider the conservative side and a more favorable excursion below well with that follow-through I was on alert and highlighting the 840s and the upper 500s is two zones I was uh, primarily concerned with here. Not long after that, I looked at a one-to-one -one harmonic cell, and we really followed through in a hurry here. I pushed my harmonic target down here to about 778s or so, and again, it didn't take long for the follow-through. Uh, just a week later, and we went much lower, getting below 900s. And then, of course, we know we bottomed out at 666.79. And here's the interesting thing is that just a few days after the low, that is the low right there, I was already looking for harmonic one-to-one -one projections to the upside. And on the heels of everything that was happening, this was actually really going against the grain, to put it mildly. But this is what I saw on the charts moving to April, looking for a much bigger one-to-one -one harmonic to get it up into the 1230s there. It actually started with the Dow. I noticed that we had a one-to-one -one harmonic extension at the 1.618, taking us right back to the prior high in the Dow. So this got me thinking about the S&P, and then, well, the rest is history there. So that chart was really important. It's the same kind of one-to-one -one harmonic that I showed you on Apple with this projected downside target, and you know what happened there. So. The interesting thing is that these harmonics happen in all markets and all time frames. Even more recently, using them to come up with these four key areas for the upside targets north of 1700 in the S&P. All right, so all of this stuff is something that has been a part of this development, but really leading up to this final culmination here. So initially, I wasn't looking for this one-to-one, -one, but after I started to put some of the pieces of the puzzle together, looking at the one-to-one -one cell harmonic, why not a one-to-one -one extension harmonic to the upside? So two things technically about this chart that I get asked about a lot. I chose to use the 1994 impulse from the right-hand side here. It's a few points lower to the left. It's about an eight-point differential, so it's not huge in terms of the ratio uh, changes there. But this is where the impulse just came out of nowhere and that's why I use that okay uh, so it's not the true extremity here I'm off by eight points but as I said with the with the ratios up here an eight point difference on a monthly chart is not going to be that noticeable the other thing about this chart that's very important as neat as it is to come up with a big picture view and have it hit like this there's obviously opportunities to be short throughout this rally depending on what the market was doing and what kind of model you're trading, what your rule set is, what period value chart you're on, all of that would influence it. But the big picture was really set as soon as we printed that low at 666.79. There are two aspects to this projection that are really fascinating because I've gotten a lot of feedback on this. A lot of it comes from the fundamental side. So 
something that I preach against with vigor, to put it mildly. Take yourself back to early 2009. We're still with the Iraq war. We've got a huge uh, debt burden for the U.S. We have our U.S. banking crisis. We have our U.S. jobs scenario. We have the shadow real estate and the derivatives of real estate as an issue. We move into the Japanese tsunami. We've got the euro crisis to deal with. We have ongoing issues with oil, okay, with the price of oil being factored in as an issue for growth and consumers and businesses. We have the issue of taxes with the Bush tax cuts expiring and the potential for new taxes to be coming in and higher taxes where we never had them before. A lot of headwinds, to put it mildly. Ongoing throughout this entire process, when you think about that and you think about the media in terms of having Twitter, your iPhone, just a media barrage, there has never been such an immense and across the board campaign to take a negative uh, spin on fundamentals to infer downside in the markets. This is something that I have never done and I've preached against very hard to get traders to trade what they see, whether you're on a five-minute chart on the E-mini or if you're on a monthly chart on the Cash S&P. This really begs for price to move up to that one-to-one -one harmonic despite everything else that you might feel. The other thing is this kind of scenario at this level does not have any comparisons. The new market that we're in as of 1994 we don't have any comparisons to it. We can compare ratios to other eras and to other time frames and other markets. But the actual S&P at the level that it's at now, we have no comparisons. So on the other side of the coin, to pull in a metric like volume and say that we can't go up because the volume's not there, that's another irrelevant point. So the fundamentals are irrelevant. That's been proven out 100%. Just printed that high right there. That's in the history books the onslaught of suppositions about where price should be based on a story completely without effect. So one thing that you should take away from this is that the fundamentals are irrelevant to price. The next thing, volume is irrelevant to price. Okay, All that matters to price is price in and of itself. That is the lesson for the decade and it's going to be lost on 90 plus percent of the traders every decade. But there's absolute proof to that effect right here. So as neat as it is to see the target hit, I am more excited about the fact that what happened on the way up with the media and the negativity relative to fundamentals uh, was completely crushed by price. That is a beautiful thing and that's something that you should take with you and move yourself towards just trading what you see. The next thing that I want to show you, I've got three historic charts here. I want to show you this one first. This is the last great one-to-one -one move that we had in the market. This is the uh, historic chart of the Dow going from the 1932 low up until the 70s high, the mid-70s pullback, and then the one-to-one -one harmonic extension from there. That puts us right to the 07 high, okay, and then the sell-off. And yes, at a one-to-one, -one, there's a very good chance you're going to see some sort of a fade, which goes to our market right now. The highlighted area here in the 70s, and this area where we are now, this is really interesting compared to the S&P. This looks like what the S&P is doing now, and this looks like what the S&P did back in the 70s. So this is somewhat of a fractal in that the low to low and the low to low are very similar in ratio and angle here, okay? And that the topping pattern is very similar here to the S&P with a break to new highs and a pullback and then off again to new structure highs. Here's a drill down view of that. Here's that drill down view where that sideways resistance was broken, new structure high, pull back, and then see you later. Off it goes. And there's a nice look at the angles there for those two harmonic pullbacks. So there's a lot of fractal comparisons here to our markets today. And then just to show you that it's also happening historically with the S&P, Here's the S&P in the 70s with price breaking to some new highs and then moving up. And again, that same sort of harmonic pullback angle there. All right, so I'll look at some of the math behind these moves here in the 60s and 70s uh, compared to where we are now and show you some projections from that in the next video and also give you the key 
if then price points to watch for price moving up and down from where we are now and it was a long time in coming I wanted to do a review of this while it was fresh we just hit the one to one harmonic here uh, really incredible chart it's uh, got a life of its own so uh, there you have one of the most incredible belief building charts you will ever see relative to ratios a monthly chart on the big board cash S&P 20 years in the making there's the one to one harmonic coming to fruition there crushing all notions of everything else that would counteract it so a trade what you see lesson if there ever has been one stay tuned for a part two to this series and I'll see you back in the live room